ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we've been having some issues as of late with volume, and I've been trying to get people to understand that that is the AI system and not so much a hack or a virus or anything like that, and that is because they have voice recognition. They don't need facial recognition, everyone. Everybody's believing that facial recognition is the thing that is binding us. They don't need facial recognition. They didn't need facial recognition yesterday. They don't need facial recognition tomorrow. What they need is voice recognition because you can't change your voice. No matter how you try to disguise your voice, you cannot change your voice. Your voice is yours. It is unique to you. I don't care if somebody tries to mimic your voice or sound like you. They can never, ever perfectly match your voice. Your voice is its own signature, which is why they use it to identify you. All right. We have some talk-ins to do because it is absolutely necessary that we discuss a couple of things. I got a question for you. When you get a pet, a dog, a hamster, a rat, a cat, whatever, and it's your pet, not just uh, an experiment guinea pig animal that you are getting ready to do some experiments on, but it is your pet, the creature that you take care of, that you feed, that you nourish, that you care for. What is the first thing you do with that particular animal? It's the first thought that comes to your mind when you go and get an animal. Families do it all the time. Husband, wife, and children, they go to a pet store to pick out an animal. And what is the first thing the family thinks of doing? It is the first thing they consider, especially doing as a family, with that new animal. Do they not decide to give it a name? Wait, 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 hold on. Ask yourself the question. Why is it that babies, when they're born, the first thing the parents want to do is give the child a name? You get a pet, the first thing you want to do is give the pet a name. You figure out what to call it because it's identification. When people introduce themselves to you, they usually tend to introduce themselves with their name, and you do the same. I've heard people say this in the past, and I never really got it until this morning. I realize how stupid man is. Because although we can give name to animals and other humans, the God that we serve doesn't need a name. No, no, we can just call him God and that's good enough. How stupid we are. That doesn't make anybody sense. We believe that everything and everyone else deserves a name. We name our cars, we name our plants, we name our homes. But yet, the God we serve, even if we're atheists, the God we serve, even if we're atheists, people think that atheists do not believe in God. That's a lie. It's not that they don't believe in God. Pay attention. Go and talk to an atheist. They know something. They just don't know how to identify it. Man, just go and talk to an atheist and speak to them. I don't believe in God. And that's a lie. You will never, ever, 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 ever hear a true atheist say that they don't believe in God. What they will tell you is, quite frankly, they don't know what it is. They just don't believe in that organized religion stupidity where people are told what to believe, told what to think, told how to think, told how to worship God. That's what they don't believe in. This is what was going through my head this morning as I was thinking about people naming animals. I mean, <laughs> when I walked out of the pet store with my dog, the and the one I called Freedom, and he tried to jump out of my arms, the young lady said, oh, I see he wants his freedom. No, 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 she didn't say it. I said that because she was opening the door for me and I said, thank you. And he tried to jump out of my arms as she was opening the door to the facility. Uh, the 
the mall because mine was a uh, that particular dog cost me twenty five hundred dollars when I had it, and that was back in two thousand and when did I buy Freedom? Two thousand and eight, and one of the best dogs I ever had, uh, American Eskimo. Well, anyway, when I purchased Freedom, he tried to jump out of my arms when she opened the door, and I said, I guess he wants his freedom, and she only heard freedom. She didn't hear, I guess he wants his freedom, and so she said, oh, is that his name? And I looked at her, and I simply said, yeah, that's his name, and he was freedom from that point on. I had not even thought of naming the dog freedom. That wasn't even close to being in my head, on my mind, in my psyche that particular day. He was going to get a name, but nonetheless, his name was Freedom. So again, how selfish and how stupid we are that we rob God of the opportunity of choosing a name for himself or choosing the name he wishes to be called by. And then, because we don't want to call him by the name that he identifies with, we make up names for him, or we combine his name with others. Isn't that interesting? Sorry, I'm moving some files in the background. You cannot read it, then you better learn how to read. Oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, moving some files because I am getting ready to get rid of this computer. I have another computer that will arrive tomorrow, and it will take me about three days to program it. But nonetheless... The other computer will arrive tomorrow. I will finish up the paperwork on this one. I have two computers sitting in front of me, but the workhorse is 2017. Computers are designed to last for five years. So my workhorse, the, yeah, it's not working anymore. And it's been sitting up for a minute. Now that's that one. Then we have this Mac, which is a piece of junk in my opinion. I will never get a Mac ever again, ever again. This computer costs $2,500. I will never do it ever again. I got a Mac because everybody talked about it being better than the PC, the Windows-based computers. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, were they wrong. And they only did that because of the rivalry between uh, Macintosh and Microsoft. This is a PC. It's not Microsoft. Microsoft didn't make. As a matter of fact, they don't even make PCs. If you think about it, Microsoft makes programs. <laughs> That's all they do. They used to, but they don't make PCs. They make programs for PCs. The original companies who made PCs were IBM and so forth. MCI, those companies made PCs. Now it's Dell and all of these other cheap knockoff companies. Well, either way, I will be migrating from this. Now, we were speaking about stupid. The other day and I'm not going to be here much longer uh, talking about this but have you ever heard somebody say man why are you trying to make me feel stupid or why are you trying to make me look stupid well first of all nobody can make you feel a certain way and nobody can make you look a certain way only you can do that ladies and gentlemen the reason why we choose not to recognize the God we serve by a name is because we're stupid. I said that initially. And when we refuse to call him by the name that he has said, this is my name. Matter of fact, uh, he, he told Pharaoh what his name was and he said it's a memorial of him to time indefinite. Do you know what indefinite time is? Time indefinite means until the end of time. Well, if you knew anything, he says he's from eternity to eternity. So time will never end. I, I thought I hit the zoom button. It's going to pop up at least once more and I'm going to have to shut it down. But anyway, time indefinite, he is exaggerating when he says to time indefinite. It doesn't mean forever. It's beyond forever. That is eternal. That's why he can say he's from eternity to eternity. Why? Because time doesn't exist with him. 
You see, we're human. We are susceptible to time, to aging. I've already told people before, if you understood time, then you would better understand our plot, our lot in life. When Adam and Eve were created, doesn't matter if you believe it or not, we know that humans started with the first two. There had to be at least two at the beginning. Even if you believe in evolution, and you believe man came from evolution, that be your belief, then you too believe that there was two at the beginning when it came to human. No, you couldn't have 15, you couldn't have 30, you couldn't have 40. Do you know why? Because there had to be the original one, and in order to produce, there had to be the original two. There were no pronouns at the time, people. My bad. So, because there was an original two, as the tradition would have it, they did something wrong. What did they do? They chose to ignore the rules, the mandates, the policies, the procedure, the code, the regulations, the law. Now, what happens when a person ignores the law? They get arrested, they get punished, and if it's severe enough, they go to jail or are either sentenced to death. Well, these two individuals stole, but they didn't just steal anything. It wasn't just so much they ate from a tree. No, it doesn't mention what type of a tree it was. It just says it was the only tree like it. And if it was the only tree like it, there are thousands of varieties of apples. And so it wasn't an apple, moron. I mean, people. All right. But anyway, because there was no other tree like it, it was the only one of its kind, then they were told to leave it alone. It didn't belong to them. But it wasn't just the fact that they ate from it. It is the fact that they were told not to do it, and they did it anyway, and then lied about it. Blamed it on someone else. That compounds the crime. So that means they tried to conceal the crime. Go, go back and take a look. They tried to hide. They tried to cover themselves. They tried to avoid justice. And that's why the penalty was as severe as it was. They didn't have to do it, but they did it anyway. So, with that being said, there was a penalty. The penalty was they were taken out of the freezer and left out in the sun. Now, you guys don't understand, do you? As long as they were in the freezer, they didn't age. They didn't grow old. Time stopped. But when you take something out of the freezer and you put it in the sun, you'll see that time starts for that item. And depending on how hot the sun is, it depends on how much aging it would do and how much disease will fester within that which is sitting in the sun. That's where bacteria builds up. And so that's what we're going through, ladies and gentlemen. We're all full of bacteria. <laughs> Are you trying to say we're full of bandini? Bandini is the word for fertilizer. And that's exactly what I'm saying. We think we are so smart that we get to tell the God that created everything whether or not he did it or not, whether like our opinion matters. Who are we? When did we become smarter than everything else in existence? Who told us that we were in charge of all knowledge? But that's what we act like. We get people telling us, Oh, I don't believe in this. I don't, nobody cares what you believe in. That's your, your prerogative. If you want to believe or not believe, you go right ahead. But nobody cares when you say you don't believe because that's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody who claims not to believe in a God is a liar. Even atheists believe in a God. Whether their God is evolution, whether their God is science, it's still what they aspire to believe, to understand. 
to worship, if I may. Either way, their God has a name. Either way, your God has a name. Whether you want it to have a name or not, it has a name. Huh, what's in a name? Isn't that an amazing statement? What's in a name? As you see on the videos that I do from the cell phone, it says Eon equals, well, oneness. Basically, energy equals oneness because what you all don't understand, here's the unique part. Man is full of energy, besides being full of Bandini. When you are in school, you learn of this as kinetic energy. Well, as one who suffers from kidney damage, I know that all of your energy is in your kidneys. Ladies and gentlemen, to put this in the nuttiest of shells, I understand kidney damage. I understand how much that takes your energy away. I've been able to do certain things that has allowed me to have more energy. That's why I'm able to do this, what is it, seven days a week? Just cutting certain things out of my diet, that has been the number one thing, telltale. But I still have to cut more out of the diet because that's not the sustainable overall It doesn't mean that I'm cured of anything. It just means I found a way of coping with it. So I don't need to take any medication or a ton of vitamins and all this other stuff that everybody else and their grandmother was suggesting to me. Oh, you should try this. You should try that. People, let me do my thing. Let me do me. You do you. Okay? And let AD do him. AD do. Okay? But as far as everything else is concerned, Understand this, there are three things going on. You live, you die, and you are now without choice. Those are the only three things that matter in this life. You live, you get to make choices while you are alive. You die, all of your choice and decision making cease. That's it. There's nothing else. I was thinking tonight because I was watching a movie, Gran uh, Turismo, and it's an all right movie. At first, I wasn't going to watch it because it looked like it was a documentary, and I uh, the way it was set up is like, what are y'all doing? But it looks like it's going to be okay, but then I'm at the part to where they're talking about the possibility of somebody dying in a racing car accident. And then I thought about it. Look at all the people who were smiling today that won't be here tomorrow. Look at all the people who were smiling yesterday that are not here today. Look at all the people who were smiling last year. Lord have mercy. And are not here. I tell you, my best friend, the very last thing I saw in his face was a smile. And that smile was taken away the very next day. Look at all the people who are smiling and laughing and having a great time. Life of the party. And then they're gone tomorrow. Then look at all the people they leave behind who have to suffer as a result of that loss. Hmm. Escape sang a song, Who Can I Run To? Who can they run to? Who can they turn to? They can't turn to another man because another man, although they may know how they feel, they cannot provide comfort. How can another man help you with death? Yeah, sure, he can give you a listening ear. He can give you someone to talk to, including a young lady. But here's the thing. They can't do anything for you. I know, I know some of you think that they can, but they can't. They can't make things better. They can only cause you to convince yourself that you feel better, but you don't feel better because that's why you cry. And I think it was Genuine who did the song One Reason or Two Reasons I Cry. Okay. And he talked about his mother and father dying. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what we do, we all suffer when our friends die. We all suffer when our family die. But you know what we don't do? Pay attention. 
because you'll realize the logic in it. We don't suffer when we die. As a matter of fact, when we die, our suffering cease. I guess what I'm trying to say, because this is, it's all in a name. After you die, what do you have? Absolutely nothing. So, if you are one of those who believe that life exists after death, then you've convinced yourself of something without any evidence. If you're one of those who believe that there is going to be a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous, then you are putting faith in something for which you have never witnessed, and all you have is documentary stories of individuals saying they witnessed it. If you're one of those people who believe when you die you just did, that means you are a person who have absolutely no hope, no future, no life. Look, if we live today and we die tomorrow, and that's all it is, then you are lifeless because you can't live that way. You must have something to aspire for in order for it to be life. That's why, pay attention, the Constitution says the pursuit of happiness. See, you must be able to pursue it. But if all you had to pursue ended up in death, then that's not life. So how could you exercise your right to life? Some of you are going to understand what's being said. Some of you are not. Some of you are going to get the logic. Some of you are not. Some of you are still going to believe that God has 99 names. <laughs> Although every name you name is a title. It's descriptive. It's not a name. Some of you are going to say, well, his name is Elohim. Elohim? E -e Elohim. Elohim? That's his name? El, meaning the, Lohim, meaning Lord. So his name is the Lord. But you're going to pronounce it in Spanish and call it a name? Ladies and gentlemen, that's what people do. And they don't choose to call him by the name that he said, this is my name, this is a memorial of me to time indefinite. They, they don't choose to call him by his name. They choose to call him by titles. They didn't ask him for permission. The Lord. Excuse me? The Lord. What? Even kings were called my lord. Okay? He is not the lord. He never called himself the lord. That was man who did that. They took his name and said, hey, 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 y'all, his name is in here 7,200 times. Nah, we can't have that. Let's take that name out of there. Let's redo that. And that's what they did. They took his name out and replaced it. Who gave them the right? Who told them that was okay? I don't think he did. Because if he did, then why would he be upset? Why would he have a requirement for all those who called on his name? So go ahead, type it in, do your research. All those who call on his name will what? So why would he have that as a requirement if his name didn't mean anything, if it didn't matter? It talked about the times they kept calling on his name. Why would they need to call on his name if his name didn't matter, if we can call him whatever we want? Let somebody call you out of your name and see if you don't have something to say, negative or positive. Negative or positive, see if you don't have something to say. See if it doesn't make you feel a certain way for someone to call you out of your name. If you are a person of color and you grew up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, let somebody call you boy, who ain't the same skin tone as you, who are three shades lighter than you, and let's see the expression on your face. If you're from the South, let somebody call you ignorant or stupid or unlettered, or anything of the sense that you don't have the same level and ability of intelligence that they have. And see if it doesn't cause you to feel negatively. So how in the world could you call the only true God? Because there, there can only be one God. There can't be thousands of gods. There are some religions who believe that there are millions of gods. 480 million is one religion. 
Impossible. See, there can only be one God. There can't be junior gods. It's impossible. Why? Because the word God means supreme being. Not superior being, but supreme being. There can only be one supreme. Go ahead and talk to Diana. She's the last one left. <laughs> anyway, there could only be one Supreme. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have two Supremes. That's why there are not two Supreme Courts in the same state. That's why the United States has vested in one Supreme Court, the judicial power. There is no judicial power in the federal courts. The judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. And then when it says, and in blah, 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 inferior courts, that's a lie. You can't have it vested in the one Supreme Court and in inferior courts. That's not the same power. Shh. The other one is legislative power, because once the Supreme Court received their power, Congress did not have the authority to bestow power on any other segment of the Supreme Court. The power had to have been taken from the Supreme Court and vested on the other court by the appointment of judges from the Supreme Court. But they couldn't have that. They had to create a process by which the judges were appointed. And since Congress appoints the judges of the other courts, they're all legislative courts. We're not going to go into that conversation and explain that to you and how that is and how the logic works and how they can't get around it. We're not going to do that. We're just expressing that you cannot have two sovereigns you cannot have two Supremes. You cannot have two Originals. You do understand that, right? You cannot have two Firstborns. Even twins, one arrives before the other, always. There is no tie when it comes to twins. They both can't come out of the womb at the exact same time. Impossible. Even if you tried, it's mathematically impossible. So, to put all of this in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, this is what goes on on a day like this with me. My mind goes through all of this, just, and that's what it's gone through in the last hour. So much so that I had to speak about what was going on in my mind. Why? Because all I saw, well, earlier this morning, it was the idea about how people choose to call God whatever they want. And he never gave them that permission. That was going on in my mind earlier this morning. And I was going to do a video to that effect. And it was going to be about maybe 10 minutes long. And then I had that consult. It lasted for four hours and 15 minutes, just about. Well, four hours and eight minutes. And the actual recorded part lasted for... Yeah, it did last for four hours and eight minutes because we did a little recording session just before and then we had to restart it. But it lasted for three hours and 46 minutes is the recording. And it wasn't a marathon or anything like that. But as I told the individuals, I couldn't just give them the information because they had some serious issues that needed to be tackled. So I told them I had to explain to them why they had to go at it the way they were going at it and had to explain to them that it had to be attacked administratively because they're fighting an administrative beast the courts are administrative they are not judicial the courts are administrative they are not constitutional the courts are administrative because we're under pay attention a national emergency the courts are administrative so if you don't understand that the courts are administrative then you will never win so what you have to do and we're getting ready to start doing this, is you have to go at them administratively, but you have to use the correct administrative weapons. Now, how do we know the court is administrative? The March 9, 1933 Act is still extant. It still exists. It hasn't gone anywhere. We're still operating under the amendments to the Federal Reserve Act. And remember, pay attention. We did a video earlier today showing you that Title 12, Section 412, 414, are still existing today. The amendments, well, remember, the March 9, 1933 Act was an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Shh, don't tell nobody. So we're still under those amendments to the Federal Reserve Act. But remember, the March 9, 1933 Act was an amendment to the Trading with the Enemy Act, which means the Federal Reserve Act is part of the Trading with the Enemy Act. Shh, don't tell nobody. Once you understand that, 
then you can better navigate in this world. Stop letting them tell you that your instruments are valueless. Start saying, I deposited my instrument with the local Federal Reserve agent as required by law. And the next time you say my instrument is valueless, I'm going to tell you to shut up. And I'll do so on the record. Because that means you are lying on the record. That's how you talk to a judge in that situation. Because they're using a presumption. There is no law out there allowing them to use presumptions. Go ahead, take a look. They get the whole presumption of law thing from the Constitution where it says that a person may not be held to answer for a crime, saved upon probable cause, saved upon due process. That's where they get presumed innocent from. The, the Constitution doesn't say nothing about no presumption of innocence. And then Congress, when they created the Article 3, they introduced presumption of law into the Constitution through Article 3, which was illegal. Because Congress didn't have the authority to take your rights and say that a presumption holds sway, that you have to debate a presumption. Some of you will understand. And then some of you will be sitting up there scratching your heads. Because I just said some words that you're not really familiar with. If you don't understand that the courts operate on presumption, that's why you keep hearing about prima facie. Prima facie, prima facie. Prima facie evidence, prima facie this, prima facie showing, prima facie standing, prima facie. Oh, the law is prima facie. The code is prima facie. That court case is prima facie. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you keep hearing of prima facie, listen to the facia word. It's by first appearance. It's what prima facie means. Man, I took a look. I thought that was you. But then when I looked again, man, that was your brother. You see what I'm saying? First appearance. It looks like something, but when you take a deeper look, you realize it ain't what they said it was. Now we're back to square one. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I started this day thinking about what's in a name. And then I realized, as I said before, out of all the creatures in existence, my God is the only one who named himself. Nobody else named him. That's why you don't have the authority to name him, because he named himself. He gave himself a name. He didn't ask for your permission, but you need his permission to change his name. Say what? That's right. You need his permission to change his name, to tell him he's got 99 different names, and then to tell him what his 99 different names are. Or to tell him that he and his son are the same person. No, because he says that. No, he doesn't. He says that they are one, meaning in union with one another. He made that clear to begin with. But he doesn't say, I, the Spirit, and the Holy Father are one. He says that his son, Christ Jesus, says, I and my Father are one. Well, if they are one, well, didn't he also speak about that is why a man will leave his father and his mother and will stick to his wife and the two will become one flesh? So how is it that you can tell me that it means something different? That's what I was telling people about the Constitution. The Constitution says one thing in the Fourth Amendment. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, possessions, homes, effects shall not be violated. Then it's a save up on probable cause. Against unreasonable searches and seizures, it says. So these lawyers, <laughs> these morons, have said, oh, well, see, that only applies to unlawful searches and seizures. But if it's a lawful search and seizure, no, that's not what it's saying. It says the right of the people to be secure in their property. So there is no lawful search and seizure without due process of law. It is unreasonable for anybody to think otherwise is what the amendment is saying. I don't have to prove that. That's what the amendment actually says. Stupid is what stupid does. You guys keep letting these lawyers and these stupid judges tell you what the law means. Judges are not interpreters of the law. They made themselves interpreters of the law. In Mulberry versus Madison, nobody gave them the right to interpret the law. They were only supposed to pay attention, determine controversies where the value was in excess of $20. 
but then they made themselves the arbitrators of the final decision of what Congress meant. Should not Congress have that ability of telling us what they meant? I don't know. Then why do the courts sit up here and try to tell us what Congress meant? Amazing, huh? Because each have a lot of skeletons in each closet, the executive branch, because what if Congress told the world that they gave all their authority to the president like they did in 1973? What was going on in 1973? The Vietnam War was just ending. That's why they were trying to take the power away from the president. That's why the Senate ordered the investigation. That's why they came back and said that they gave the president 470 plus laws to rule this country without normal constitutional process. They were angry at the executive branch. They know where the skeletons are buried, ladies and gentlemen. Then the Supreme Court supported both of them because they had no other choice. But the Supreme Court is constantly taking power away from the executive branch and the legislative branch and vice versa. So when you guys start understanding what's going on, that these idiots are perpet perpetrating and perpetuating a crime, they didn't have any authority to suspend the Constitution. The Trading with the Enemy Act is a military act. It does not apply to the civilian population. Go back and take a look. The Trading with the Enemy Act is a military act. They don't have the authority to apply it to the civilian population. The military can exercise no authority over the civilian population. So why are you guys allowing it? Now, I'm not asking for people to speak up and shout out and scream. And No, I'm saying it's too late. 90 years you guys have been allowing this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a military flag. And y'all never paid attention. It doesn't need a gold trim around the edges. The Attorney General in 1925 told all of you that the flag and its dimensions are within the preview of the President of the United States as his, under his authority as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Pay attention. The flag of the country is a military flag. It doesn't matter if it has a gold trim or not. Shh, don't tell nobody. It's called the law of the flag. Go ahead and read about the law of the flag. We've been under military jurisdiction the moment they brought that stupid flag into this country and started waving it. And then they had you guys pledge your allegiance to a stupid flag. It's called indoctrination. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the Pledge of Allegiance. Listen, listen to every single word. I pledge allegiance not to the United States of America, but to the flag of the United States to which it belongs and to its so-called republic for which the flag stands for the republic. I thought this was a democracy. One nation of the God. This was never supposed to be a Republican form of government, ladies and gentlemen. Go back and take a look. This was supposed to be a democracy. That's why the people voted. That's what the Declaration of Independence was all about. Don't take my word for it. Go back and take a look. But they made it a Republican form of government because of their ties with Britain. Because Britain is a Republic form of government. My bad. I thought y'all knew. You see, we could have tons of conversations about all of this basic understandings. You have to go to the foundation. Once you understand the basics, you can understand what happened after that. You can understand how the United States got into the position it's in. We are under military rule, which means the courts are under military rule, which means who controls the military? The executive branch, which means we are administrative. That's why Congress invented the stupid Administrative Procedures Act, the most unlawful act on the planet when being applied to man. Administrative corporations have no jurisdiction over a man or a woman. Shame on you guys for allowing them. <sighs> it's a wonderful world. zippity doo da zippity a Ladies and gentlemen, with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys get back to your day. I did a video earlier, and it was literally 39 minutes long, the same as this one, and I decided not to put it out because I got too personal. But this is just what was on my mind today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's in a name?
Y'all take care. Goodbye.